Hi, in this video, I would like to share an important topic which is very much relevant in the clinical point of view, that is agents for pulp protection. So why do we need various agents such as liners, varnishes or bases in order to protect the pulp? So as we all know, we have various restorative materials being used in our operative field in order to restore the functionality of a tooth and also aesthetics for that matter. So the moment we use any kind of metallic restoration or any kind of resin or any kind of cement such as glass ionomer etc. There is a tendency for this material to irritate the pulp. So it can be either a thermal irritation or chemical irritation or kind of galvanic irritation or there can be even micro leakage present between the junction of the restorative material as well as the tooth margin which can again lead to bacterial leakage and also some sort of pulp irritation. So keeping these facts in mind we need to formulate or use certain adjuncts which have the capacity to overcome the side effects or the drawbacks of these materials. They are nothing but agents such as varnishes, liners and bases. So the ultimate aim of these agents is to prevent the entry of noxious stimuli into the pulp thereby protecting the integrity of the pulp. Now let's classify various agents for pulpal protection. First, we have bases. The thickness of base is a minimum of 0.75 mm. So it can be more than 0.75 mm. So the minimum thickness of a base should be 0.75 mm. And then we have thin film liners. whose thickness varies from 1 to 50 microns. So in this thin film liners, we again have solution liners and suspension liners. Solution liners are also called as varnishes. So solution liners or varnishes, the thickness is around 1 to 2 microns and the suspension liners, the thickness is around 20 to 25 microns. So this is regarding a thin film liners and then we have a third category that is thick film liners. So these thick film liners are also called as cement liners. The thickness varies from 0.2 to 1 mm. The best example being calcium hydroxide. So this is in general the classification of various agents for pulpal protection. That is we have bases, thin film liners and thick film liners. Bases the minimum thickness has to be 0.75 mm and thin film liners thickness varies from 1 to 50 microns and in this we have again solution liners or suspension liners the solution liners are also called as varnishes and the thickness is 1 to 2 microns whereas suspension liners the thickness is 20 to 25 microns and then we have a third category that is thick film liners or cement liners whose thickness is around 0.2 to 1 millimeters now let's discuss in detail regarding each agent. First coming to varnish. So varnish basically is nothing but a natural gum such as a copal or rosin or it can be a synthetic resin which is dissolved in an organic solvent such as acetone, chloroform or ether. So what is the main function of a varnish? The main function of a varnish is to prevent the entry of various noxious stimuli, various irritants through the dentinal tubules into the bulb. So it acts as a barrier, mainly with respect to micro leakage when there can be potential gap formation between the restoration and the tooth margin, there can be micro leakage, bacterial penetration, seepage of saliva and entry of various irritants 
into the pulp through dentinal tubules. So in those circumstances, varnish prevents their entry by acting as a barrier or by sealing the dentinal tubules. And secondly, varnish can also be used as a sealant in order to prevent the entry of various corrosion products of amalgam thereby preventing tooth discoloration in the areas adjacent to amalgam restoration. So that's the main role of a varnish with respect to amalgam restoration. So after understanding the functions of varnish, how do we apply varnish? So varnish can be applied either using a cotton pledget or a disposable tip. So it has to be applied not just in one but two or three coatings. So the purpose of applying it for by uh, in more than two or three coatings is the fact that the moment you apply it onto the surface what happens is the organic solvents such as acetone they are highly volatile and they just evaporate. So the moment they evaporate they leave a thin deposit of this natural gum or varnish. So what happens is in the process there can be development of small pinholes. So in order to fill up those spaces we need to apply a second coating and if necessary a third coating. So varnish basically has to be applied in more than two coatings. So after understanding how to apply where to apply so where do we apply varnish is it on the floor or is it on the walls or where so basically as i said once you understand the function of the varnish you know where to apply so it basically helps in sealing dentinal tubules so wherever you find dentin just go and apply that's it so it can be applied all over the cavity surface and then clinical relevance As I said, while doing an amalgam restoration, applying varnish over a long term prevents the entry of corrosion products into the tubules, thereby preventing discoloration in the adjacent tooth areas. So apart from that, while using certain biocompatible materials or those materials which have the potential to bond to tooth such as a glass anomer cement or composite, one should not use varnish because using varnish prevents the addition of these materials to tooth. So care has to be taken while using certain biocompatible materials. So this is in brief regarding varnish. First we need to understand the chemical nature of varnish that it's either a natural gum or a synthetic resin and what are the functions of varnish mainly sealing the dentinal tubules by preventing the entry of irritants into the pulp through dentinal tubules and how do we apply? using either a cotton pledger or an applicator tip and in more than two or three coatings and then where do we need to apply so all over the surface of the cavity where you find dentin the main aim being to seal the dentinal tubules and clinical relevance especially while using a certain adhesive materials as i have said care has to be taken that varnish should not be applied first as it interferes with their bonding so this is in brief regarding varnish now we'll go to liners. So previously, in order to use the therapeutic benefit of calcium hydroxide, it was applied as a thin layer beneath a restoration as calcium hydroxide whose pH is, it's a base, right? So calcium hydroxide pH is very high, it's in the range of 11. So the moment we apply calcium hydroxide as a thin liner on the, surf, on the base of a cavity, what happens is there can be reparative dentin formation. And most importantly, apart from the reparative dentin formation, the moment we are placing very acidic cements such as GIC or uh, zinc phosphate, especially zinc phosphate, the low pH of the zinc phosphate can be countered or neutralized by this liner such as calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide can be used as a liner and as I have said previously, the thickness is around 0.2 to 1 mm. So the moment it's used as a liner, its function is one is to form reparative dentin and secondly to neutralize the acid present in the overlying cement such as a zinc phosphate cement. And how do we apply this? So liner basically is mixed in a solvent which can be either aqueous carrier. So the moment we apply it with either a plastic filling instrument, what happens is it uniformly gets distributed onto the base material, onto the base of a cavity. So after applying the uh, liner, we need to keep in mind that apart from the regular functions, several other materials such as 
low viscous zinc oxide used in all or a glass anomer cement can also be used as liner. So the functions of liner have expanded broadly. So previously it used to be like forming reparative dentin and to neutralize acids from the overlying acidic cements and now the functions have expanded not only to include those things but also to help in adhesion when GIC is used and also to seal the interface between the restoration and the tooth. So it basically also helps in sealing the dentinal tubules thereby preventing various noxious stimuli from entering into the pulp. So this is in brief regarding liners and while discussing varnish I forgot to mention one point that is Another material can be used as a substitute to varnish that's nothing but a bonding agent. Research has proved that usage of bonding agent also has the same purpose. So they have proved that the varnish as well as the dentin bonding agents do carry the same role that is a sealing of dentinal tubules. So apart from varnish and liners we have the third material that is base. So as I have said previously in the classification, the minimum thickness of a base has to be 0.75 mm and the function of a base is to restore the lost tooth structure, especially the dentin. So the thickness has to be a minimum of 0.75 mm. As you can clearly see, the thickness of the base is very much high compared to liners as well as varnish because the main function of the base is to provide proper mechanical support to the overlying restoration. For suppose assume this as a cavity and we are going to fill up with uh, some kind of material take for suppose amalgam. So we need a stronger material underlying the amalgam so that it can resist the condensation force while placing amalgam and also can resist various masticatory forces thereby preventing the fracture. So since base has a, such an important function, it is applied in greater thickness, a thickness of more than 0.75 mm. So we have various base materials such as zinc phosphate base, a traditional base Harvard cement and then we have a glass anomer cement, zinc polycarboxylate etc. Even zinc oxide used in all in some circumstances can be used as a base. So we have various base materials and depending upon the restorative material used, the base material changes. Take for suppose amalgam. In case of amalgam, traditionally in shallow cavities, a varnish would be sufficient. But if the cavity depth is moderate to high, more than 1.5 mm or 2 mm, then we need to go for a base where calcium hydroxide can be used or liner, uh, not liner, calcium hydroxide or zinc oxide usinol can be used. This was given in Philips especially. So in case of amalgam restorations, either zinc oxide usinol or calcium hydroxide can be used. But in case of gold alloys where gold restorations are used we need a higher compressive strength material such as zinc phosphate to be used as a base and when using composites which is a resin we cannot use a varnish or we cannot use zinc oxide usinol as usinol and varnish uh, they tend to interfere with the uh, setting of the composite so when composite restoration is being used either calcium hydroxide or a glass anomer base can be used so what I mean to say is based upon the restorative material being used the nature or the type of base changes so we need to be aware of the chemical properties of these materials so that we can apply them practically so the main important function of a base is to provide mechanical support and also to prevent the entry of dermal stimuli into the pulp. As I have said here, while restoring a cavity with amalgam, amalgam is basically a metal, it's an alloy. So the moment we take some hot coffee or an ice cream, the dermal changes are easily carried out into the pulp because this is a strong conductor of heat. So this can injure the pulp which is present in the tooth. So 
by placing a base in appropriate thickness we can prevent the entry of dermal stimuli into the pulp and apart from that it also helps in preventing the entry of uh, galvanic uh, kind of currents and also prevents the entry of various stimuli harmful stimuli into the pulp so basically base has varied functions mechanical support prevents dermal uh, irritants to enter galvanic stimuli and also various chemical irritants so keeping these things in mind we need to understand that as i have said earlier depending upon the restorative material the nature or the type of base we apply changes so apart from that if we are planning to apply varnish in order to seal a dentinal tubule then the entire scenario changes the sequence changes again the sequence of application depends upon the type of base material used for suppose we are planning a class 1 amalgam restoration so we need to apply varnish so that it helps in sealing the dentinal tubules even the amalgam is a self sealing restoration it takes around 5 to 7 years in order to form the corrosion products which seal the interface so till then we need to have a kind of material such as varnish to seal the dentinal tubules in the meanwhile so while in this clinical scenario when we are planning for a class 1 amalgam restoration we need to apply varnish we need to apply base and we need to apply amalgam or we need to restore it with the amalgam so what is the sequence of events we need to follow do we need to apply varnish first or base first so it all depends upon the type of base we are using if suppose we are planning to place a zinc phosphate base if we are planning to place a zinc phosphate base then since zinc phosphate base is highly acidic we can't directly place it on the base we need to apply varnish first so so we need to apply varnish first in this scenario because applying varnish seals the dentinal tubules and then after applying varnish we need to place a highly acidic cement such as zinc phosphate cement so that the chemical irritation will be reduced to the pulp but keep in mind the moment we mix zinc phosphate to such an extent that it is less tacky and dull in color dull in appearance it means less amount of free acid is available so even that will be least irritating to the pulp so apart from that while we are regularly placing zinc phosphate cement it's always advisable to apply varnish followed by zinc phosphate base and then followed by amalgam restoration what if the cavity is deep if the cavity is deep enough close to pulp then what we'll be doing is we'll be placing a liner so first we'll be placing a calcium hydroxide liner in order to uh, have some kind of beneficial uh, activity like formation of reparative dentin and after applying calcium hydroxide again we'll go with the application of varnish followed by base and then followed by restoration so this entire sequence of application depends upon the type of material we are using type of restoration type of base type of cavity etc so in order to be very much confident clinically we need to understand these very basics in order to provide proper treatment protocol to the patient so the summary here is after understanding the need for agents for pulp production and after going through the classification we need to briefly understand the role of each agent it can be varnish liner and base and the sequence of application is also very much important as it plays a critical role in saving the integrity of pulp